Hey, what's up everyone? It's Raj from the Injury Insight. Today's episode will be going over Alex Smith's injury against the Texans. So, it took place last week. Here's the video right here. This is the initial view. And then if you're squeamish, you might not want to look at this one. You got caught. That leg got caught rolled up. You can see it kind of dislocate right there. So here's exactly what happened. He has that force coming up from two players. That leg is caught underneath, and it's a rotational force. And I, these two lines show the moment of impact, the mechanism of injury, where that tibia and fibula broke. So we know afterwards that he has what is known as a spiral fracture, which is kind of a circular fracture going up and down the bones, and also a compound fracture, or an open fracture, as it's known in the medical world, where the bone is actually sticking out outside the leg. So the first thing that really brings to mind in terms of danger is possible infection. And then secondly, that area of the leg is full of nerves and arteries. So you want to check to see if those are impacted. So this right here is that lower leg, the tibia and the fibula, and then also the foot as well. So I'm just giving y'all a nice little 360 tour here of that area. And the lower leg, you know, is it's rich in anatomy. Specifically, it's rich in nerves, as I'm showing you right here. You can see there's so there's a lot of nerves running through that area. So you can have sensory changes. You have a check for motor or functional changes as well to see if any nerves were impacted. And secondly, you have a bunch of arteries as well so if an artery is damaged it's cutting off blood supply and blood supply is essentially without blood supply you're gonna lose tissues will die the bones gonna die so you have to do those checks really really quickly to make sure those aren't impacted and so for Alex Smith he had surgery relatively quickly uh, research shows that having taking more than six hours after surgery with an open fracture leads to increased infection rates. Now, we also know he didn't have any neurovascular compromise. His uh, nerves or arteries weren't damaged. What we don't know is the exact type of surgery that he had because we don't know where exactly the bone was broken. And if the, the fibula and tibia are broken higher, it's known as a shaft fracture. Now, if they're broken more distally, or farther down the leg is closer to the ankle joint and that makes a big difference in terms of recovery and also in terms of return to play expectations the other thing the team needs to be cognizant of moving forward here in the next couple days which i'm sure they're watching out for right now is something known as compartment syndrome this is when the tissues inside the leg and sometimes with an open fracture the blood from that wound actually starts to compress on some of the nerves and arteries leading to possible neurovascular compromise. And what I talked about earlier, you know, having some of that neuronal dysfunction and having blood supply cut off as well. Now for Alex moving forward, the first thing we need to know is that the average return to play for all tib fib fractures, regardless of where they are, is about 10 months. But the team has come out and said that his will likely be about six to eight months, which tells us that it's that's the fracture is closer to the ankle joint rather than being along the shaft. And a study on football players with any tibial shaft fracture did show that over 90% returned. And even though performance was impaired in year one, they were able to get back to pre-injury levels in year two. Now there are some risks moving forward regardless. There's a chance of non-union upwards of 7.5%. There's chances for osteoarthritis developing, and the more severe the injury, the greater the risk is there. There's some chances for persistent long-term pain and swelling. That's especially true the higher up the fracture is. There's potential for decreased ankle range of motion as well. And also, there's the chance for muscle atrophy, specifically in the calf area, which has been shown in some athletes for years after the injury. However, there is no study. We don't know if that calf atrophy is actually affecting function or not. Now, all in all, all things considered, you know, Alex is pretty fortunate. 
the, the fracture seems to be farther along down the ankle, which bodes much better for his return to play timeline and much better outcomes than if he had it higher up along the middle of the bone. Now he should be back for next season based on the timeline given unless he has some setback. So looked bad, but could have been a lot worse. All right, so that does it for today's episode. As always, you can find me on Twitter at 3cbperformance.com. Check out the site, Injury Insight, for more articles. And if you're interested in the clinical side, check out my clinical website, 3cbperformance.com.